How do you feel like Kentucky prepared you for the next level? <laughs> Mental toughness. And that was the most important thing that I got from Kentucky. Scow Le Bissier, born March 18, 1996. Today's feature has been called one of the more interesting cases of a draft prospect by NBA scouts who was rated as the number one high school prospect in his class and projected to be the first overall pick depending on the year he'd have entering college. He was ranked ahead of multiple future NBA All-Stars, All-NBA performers, and guys with a real shot at one day sneaking into the Hall of Fame. Guys like Brandon Ingram, DeJounte Murray, Jamal Murray, Ben Simmons, Pascal Siakam, DeMontis Sabonis, even the eventual Rookie of the Year Malcolm Brogdon. He was one solid year away from that type of NBA team interest into his talent but wound up falling to the end of the first round, received limited opportunities because of his draft spot, and was out the league altogether at just 23 years old. He's 28 now and honestly the likelihood of him returning to the NBA and improving his bus status looks to be a window closed forever. When Scott LeBissier left his country of Haiti, a developed size and skilled big man, he left with the pressure of one day becoming an NBA player for the next few decades and the only hope for his family to help financially and open doors for kids where he's from and to some extent he did that. He made it to the NBA, albeit as a less interesting player than initially thought, but he still made it. He's been on the professional level since 2016, able to keep a basketball job at least ever since and can be a great example that making the NBA isn't the be-all end-all and for players whose careers didn't turn out the way expected, all isn't at all lost. For a 6'11 giant, compared to the regular working force, basketball can be the only hope for a guy that's prepared himself to only work one job the rest of his life. Keeping a job in that field is a blessing, but you can't help but wonder how a prospect rated so high by all the experts who are paid to evaluate prospects that headed to one of the more player-friendly coaches and schools in the country in Kentucky a program that's produced the most NBA draft picks since 2008, not come in and dominate the competition, leading to at least a top 10 or lottery pick. On the amateur level, skills and talent weren't something Scal lacked for the most part, but shows just how crucial each decision a prospect makes either helps or hurts their eventual future. The school they go to, the coach they choose to develop them, and the timing in which they decide to forego their amateur status, all is taken into account and determines whether they capitalize on their potential or not. Scott LeBissier is one that gravely missed on his, and for these reasons, his growth was stunted. What happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to T underscore Banks 1024 on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's go, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Scal LeBissier is a 6'11 power forward center from Port-au-Prince, Haiti that had a tough journey to where he's at now to say the least. Along with being from the poorest country in Latin America, he suffered tremendous loss during the 2010 earthquake in his home country that made his house collapse and it almost took his life. He, along with his mother and brother, were trapped under the debris of their house, his legs pinned for hours before rescue. This made him move to America, seeking a better chance at life. He was a soccer player initially, before he became too tall and switched sports. He took the footwork he learned from his soccer days along with hard work to gain the skill to go along with it and became a top player in the country by his senior year. A year he was almost ineligible because he practiced with his Memphis high school team before transferring to another school in the same state. A made-up school was created for him to still compete against competition at the highest level and in those games he dominated enough to receive a scholarship from Kentucky. Stunt number one, going to the wrong school. For Scow, everything he needed to do to ensure his choice of college program to attend, he did and it was exactly that, his choice. He had all the schools you could name that needed a near 7 foot big man and projected number one overall pick. 
But again, going back to the importance of every decision you make at that point, the school you go to can mean a fork in the road change to your pro career. Just look at DJ Wagner. He too was a projected first overall pick in the 2024 draft before entering college to now, if he went undrafted, no one would be surprised. Like Wagner, Scow decided to attend Kentucky, the most high-profiled basketball program in the country these days, and the fit with the coach and system stunted his growth. I always say this and will continue to, that the school you go to doesn't matter when you're a top 10, top 5 prospect, or as low as a one-star recruit. If you choose the school that likes you the most, will use you in the ways that best displays your talent, and most importantly has the most opportunity for you to be on the floor, is all you need to jump to the NBA. With social media and coverage of everything in today's society, making a name for yourself shouldn't be that hard if you remain focused. Notoriety mixed with talent and production can shoot you up draft boards. Coach Calipari himself admitted after Scow's freshman year that he used him the wrong way. He wanted him to be Carl Anthony Towns when they were two different people with two different mental makeups and confidence levels. When Scow became frustrated being used as a back to the basket big, he sulked and lost confidence by the month before being pulled from the starting lineup in favor of former three-star recruit Derek Willis. The confidence never returned, and Coach Cal had other focuses to tend to to cater to LeBissier, and he ended up having a disappointing season, averaging 6 points, 3 rebounds, and just 15 minutes per game. At a different school, he could have averaged 20 and 10 and went top 3, meaning a team's undivided focus on his development. Stunt number 2 wasn't ready for the draft. Scott LeBissier was a late bloomer to the sport of basketball and had a pretty shaky high school career that was extremely non-traditional, especially his senior year. The instability and lack of time facing the best competition slowed his development going into college as he wasn't even ready to compete mentally or physically on that level. For him to decide to leave and enter the NBA draft after a freshman season like he had was a likely chance things went unfortunate. I understand him leaving Kentucky, seeing as Cal was already using him the wrong way, so who's to say that doesn't happen again? Cal also had four top bigs coming in in 2016, which meant more competition for LeBissier, and he's already shown the inability to welcome competition before. Then, what if he gets hurt or has another down year? He wouldn't be close to the first round pick he still became in 2016, taken 28th overall by the Suns, then traded to the Kings. With a year like he had to still getting a first round promise, how do you not take that chance? But him transferring to a different school instead of going to the draft would have helped him much more in the long run. Him transferring, then averaging 20 and 10 at a Tennessee or Baylor, would have went a long way and would have allowed him to be more comfortable and show more of his talent. He averaged 8 points his first two seasons in Sacramento, nearly 5 rebounds and .7 blocks in about 18 minutes per game, but it wasn't enough to keep the Kings from trading him to Portland in 2019, where his production sharply declined ever since. Stunt number three wasn't tough enough. Immediately when I saw Scal Labissier on the court for the first time, my initial feeling toward him was he just doesn't seem to have the physical toughness nor dog in him to be a silent killer like a Tim Duncan. If it were up to me, I couldn't recruit or draft a player like that. In this case, it was almost too evident. So much so, I respectfully don't understand what was seen in him after his Kentucky year that made a team take him first round in the first place. Add to that the way he responded after Coach Cal used him the wrong way by sulking and his production declining every month of the year. Not to mention the implications your future has on your entire family and even country. Naturally, you have to at least want to compete. Getting to the NBA, Scow struggled with physical competition as he couldn't improve as a rebounder especially, which is top three for a big in basketball. Scouts saw his high release and exceptional workout warrior skills against a wooden chair and decided he was worthy of a draft pick. 
In actuality, it was quite evident to see he'd struggle in the NBA. Most his shots were hook shots or fadeaway jumpers, rarely seeking contact and finishing through it, and his jump shot didn't come around like expected to relieve that either. After Portland, he signed with the Knicks, only to be waived days later and join their D-League team. He's played in Puerto Rico, Mexico, and back with the G-League in 2023, where he hasn't developed, like hoped, into the potential he once had as a projected first overall pick. All in all, Scal Labissiere's story is one of making the right decisions. He did that all the way up to Kentucky and things haven't been the same since. At 28, who knows what the future holds, but he does have coveted size and may just turn the corner one day, but gone is his potential and for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunned Growth, and I'm out.